Besides drawing, we need to be able to use text within our graphics program. In this chapter, we'll create and format text, use placeholder text, and learn how to use the find and replace command in spell checker. Let's get to work. So I'm going to open up a brand new document, and 500 by 500 is just fine, and I'm going to click OK. Come over to your tool panel and choose your text tool. And I'm just going to click once out onto my page. Take a look at the bounding box for your text tool. And in the upper right hand corner, you're going to notice a circle. So what that tells me is that if I were to paste a paragraph in here, that I would end up with one long line of text because this doesn't have any end to it. So if I'm going to type something here, notice that I've got my circle. I'll move this over here to the center and change this just in my alignment for just a second. We'll talk about that. But I'm going to grab my text tool. Let's say that I had a paragraph that I wanted to bring in. And that paragraph I don't want to be one long line. Then I would need to click hold and drag out a text frame. Now take a look at that square in the upper right hand corner now and you'll see that it's a square not a circle. So that's my visual key that I have a text frame now and I can't type that fast so I'm just going to fake some typing here just to show that now it doesn't get any wider than that. It just will keep that constrained to the width I chose to drag my text frame out to. So I'm going to delete that for a minute. And we'll concentrate on just a little bit of type on the page. So take a look at your property inspector. It shows what I have typed in there. And I see my width and my height for it. I also can see my X position and my Y position on my page. So if I need to position that precisely, I'm able to do so. And now I've got my font list. Now if I know exactly what I want with my type, I can just start typing that. And it was going to take me to Verdana, which is what I started typing. I have my list, and if I roll my cursor up my list, and you'll be able to see the preview of what that font actually looks like. So if I choose one that has different attributes for that particular font, like if it had italic or regular or light or extra bold, for instance, this one that I chose only has bold. I would be able to choose that in my list as well. So let me go to, let's say, my Myriad Pro. And here are my list of other attributes for that particular font. Now I have a size over here. So I can easily just use my slider. Or if I know exactly what I would like, I can just type it in. I have a color for my font. So I can pick any color in my range. If I had an image out on my page, I'd be able to pick that up. Or I can go to my system colors and choose something from in there. Now I have my kerning or tracking. So for instance, if I want to pull this down just a tiny bit, then it's going to pull my letters closer together. Now I don't have a paragraph here, so let me click back in here and create a paragraph. And now my next option over is my letting. So I have 120 as my letting, basically Think of it as two points larger than my text size. And it's on just a percentage right now, or I can give it an actual pixel value for my letting. So I can change that. I have a first line indent.
make that very strange. There we go, so we can actually see that value. I have a horizontal scale. My space before, and I don't have a paragraph, so here let me make that into a paragraph. So my space before, and a space after. Now I have my usual suspects here for my fake attributes. So I can do bold, italic, and also underline, which comes in handy when I am specifying something to be a link in a mockup for a web page. So I also can make sure that I've got my horizontal left to right, or I can do vertical right to left. My typical alignments, left align, center align, and right align, and justified. And what type of anti-alias that I'm using as well. Anti-alias helps me smooth out my type. So for instance, so you can see it, if I type out, let's say, a large P here, and make it really big, And let me try and zoom in a little bit so we can see this. So if I have no anti-alias, I'm able to see each individual little pixel that makes up that particular font. So then I have different levels of anti-alias. So I have crisp, strong, and smooth. Or I can do a custom anti-alias. And I can also auto kern as well. Next, we'll take a look at using placeholder text and importing text.